Hey guys, very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to the video number 366 and uh, in this video guys today we are going to discuss about how to create that drop downs, how to create the dynamic drop downs using the offset function. Okay, uh, so uh, if you're watching the channel for the first time, welcome to the channel and uh, I want to tell you that on this channel you will find all these 366 videos on Excel, Excel, VBA access and access VBA and this is where you can, you know, go and check out the, all the videos according to the title according to the playlist we have created 44 playlists right if you scroll it down you will find all these 44 different different playlists right so uh, in this video now because we are going to talk about the offset function how to create the drop downs you please go ahead first if you don't have any knowledge about the offset function please click on this excel offset function the playlist where you can see that we have actually got the two videos so you need to first get the understanding you know? So please go ahead and watch the uh, part one and part, part two and then maybe you can come back and watch this video. Okay. That's what I mean. Uh, I would say that the uh, important thing you should do. But otherwise, if you still want to watch this video, you're always welcome. You can go back and watch those videos as well. Now, guys, um, I have talked about the, you know, the dynamic drop downs in my previous videos as well. But there we talked about the indirect function. Okay, if you go to the playlist Excel Interact, you will find there that I have talked about the how to create the dynamic drop downs using the indirect function. But today we are going to learn that how to create the dynamic drop downs using the offset function as well. Right. So this is going to be the advanced uh, level video. Uh, here I will not talk about the you know the basics of the offset. For that you can go and check out that those two videos. Now I have prepared the data in order to save the time. Now in front of you you can see that I've got a couple of uh, you know items here uh, like you know there is a header called direction and in the direction header I have created uh, some you know I. Uh, some names like southwest north center and east now the first thing which i want to do what exactly we want to achieve now we would like to create here a drop down and uh, that drop down should uh, show us the directions for example southwest north and center and east so that is very easily uh, you know achievable what you need to do is you need to go to the data and you need to click on the data validation and here you're going to click on the list okay and in the list you please provide the source don't include the header okay just keep it like this b2 to b6 guys you know that uh, I, I you know using this drop down i got this now if it is a new thing for you then i hope you will understand this because uh, it's a very normal thing i mean it's not really nothing uh, i mean it's, it's anything a kind of a program or maybe a long formula it's just a simple step that you got to go to the data and click on the data validation and then provide the data provide the range okay very simple this drop down comes now what we actually want to do is we want to create another drop down here activities uh, which would be dependent upon what the user is going to select here so if i choose the center here this is where we want to create another drop down which would give me the center item for example this architecture and museum and uh, if i change this center to let's say south then here the drop down should start reflecting me the the items like beaches, sand, and garden. This is what we want to do in the offset function. Okay. Now, uh, the first, the primary thing which uh, you would see in this, uh, you know, uh, sheet is that I actually have already made this table. Okay. I have designed this table, and this designing is not. I mean, you know, it's not a normal table if you look at this table because you know, uh, I have special plan here what I have done is I just copied these all items and uh, put it somewhere here maybe let's say maybe here and then I'm going to uh, click on the paste special so I'm going to click on the alt es alt es is a paste special you can also go to the home tab and you need to click on the transpose now when you click on the transpose it converts all the items into, into the horizontal direction and then you know obviously I have written all the items there right so this is very much important for you because what actually happens uh, if, if you just go ahead and select this entire table and you go to the formula and you create the selection create from selection okay when you click on this what will happen you need to tick mark this top row and when you click ok when you click ok what will happen for all the top rows will be created in the name manager you will have their list 
you want to see it because I have already created it so let me just uh, show you here you click on this drop down this is called the address bar if you select any cell it tells you about the address it is also called the name box right so what will happen when you do this create from selection you have all the headers created here so if I select center you see that it is automatically going to that range so it is going to the north right so this is how I have created that so even if you go to the name manager you can create from here as well for example uh, here you can write that uh, the south name is the south and it refers to what you can write here that it refers to this range but imagine if you have like in this example I am uh, going to create one two three four five five knee managers so i will have to do this activity five times so that's going to take a lot of time and that is why what i did i just put this data in a proper order keeping all my headers on the top and whatever the item i want to reflect in the drop down i kept that you know underneath those headers and then what i did is i simply went to the create from selection and here i just uncheck that and click ok and when you click ok because you have selected the top row automatically you will have the you know all the headers created as a new manager and then you can see here or maybe you can go to the new manager it's one of the same thing right so once we have done that for example if i just uh, select the center and i click here look at this what will happen this range is getting highlighted that means they are created now once they are created then what you need to do is let me delete that now we would like to use the offset function now guys uh, offset function does what so basically if you have selected the south here for example just to give you the exam you know uh, understanding before I directly write the function in the drop down if you write here offset for example and uh, now I'm gonna say that you got to start from here for example the b13 is a reference and then the row number has to be one because i need this you know row number 14 which is where i have the beach that item and the column number has to be same so it is going to be zero i have talked about this off offset function as i said you know uh, if you want to under understand it so here i will not talk much about the basics of the offset how to use it so i'm going to keep my this uh, column number as zero and then uh, the height and the width so obviously we don't need the height and the width right now what i will do is i, I will simply actually go here and i press enter and you see that i get to see here beaches okay now what will happen if you just uh, drag this down you will see that you will get to see all the items here the sand and garden what is happening if you just press f2 this basically the reference is changing so here i'm the reference changes because when it started the function here we started with the b13 and you know that when i'm going to drag the formula downward it will change to b14 so now from the b14 it is going on the first row this is the zero row and this is going to be the first row and on the same column so that is why you know gradually oh, i mean when you're going to drag the formula formula will pick everything for you okay but the point is if the drop down changes then you will have a problem because this should also change actually so in that case what you need to do is because you're starting from this b13 so you need to now change the column number because to go to the river and the rafting you will have to move one column to the right side so you will have to change this column number one and then after changing the column number if you if you go ahead and drag the formula again you will get to see here the reverse in the rafting right and same goes with the other another part for example if i just choose the center you know that my reference is b13 okay which is fixed uh if from b13 if i have to go to the architecture and museum i will have to move 0 1 2 and 3 so three columns i will have to move so i'm going to actually write here three okay and then i'm going to drag it down so this is how the function actually works right so we will have to automate this first of all it's an important thing because you can't write this you know three every time or two or one column number basically changes your reference will not change so i'm going to keep my reference as you know uh, in this case uh, this particular case i'm going to change uh, obviously the reference is also changing i beg your pardon because what happens when you drag the form in the downward direction you are actually you know going to create the b14 here b15 here if you look at this particular point right so now what we will do is uh, first of all i'm going to change this column number i'm going to make it automatic so i will do I will do I will find this whatever the user will select in the drop down that should be found here in this table so you know that the match function if I write the match function the match function is going to return with the position of the item which is user is going to select 
in other words we can see that it is going to give us the column number so the, when the center the match is going to look up and it is going to find in this table it would come here one two three and four so you will have the four but for offset but for offset function this actually the fourth means east because offset always starts with the zero you know so from the from the b for uh, 13 if i if i will have to move four columns then it would be zero one two and three and four so it will stop on the east part which is wrong so that is why to balance it out i'm going to sub subtract one from it okay now uh, that's it right now i'm not going to use the height and the width so i simply press enter and you see that i got the you know this architecture which is correct so i'm going to freeze the table we will actually drag this formula and uh, match f5 is also going to be freezed completely because match f5 is what user will select from the drop down what will happen if you drag this down see what happened you get to see here architecture and you know museum so if i just change anything over here the match will find out the column number of the south you know that in the table which is b13 to f13 the you know the column number would come as one but for offset it is going to be zero that is why we subtract it so if you just do this you will have your you know the entire list coming here right now the point is uh because two major things you want to understand guys here first of all i need the drop down i don't want to you know show these items like this in the table in the excel right and the second thing is uh, after i just make them available in the drop down what i the next thing which i want is that I don't want them in scattered i want don't i do not want them in the different different cells okay so obviously the function this function will be used only once okay? it we cannot use this function on every cell so what we will do is uh, we will go to the height parameter so when you press uh, when you when you just backspace it height parameter which is the optional parameter this is what we are going to use now if you if you do not know height parameter though i have uh, you know i had explained this in my offset series height actually refers to the number of the rows how many number of the rows you would require now that depends how many items i have because you you see that in the south i will be using the three rows in the west i will be using two rows in the north i will be using one two three four five five rows and so on right so the height what we will do actually is we will count the number of the items so i'm gonna keep the maximum item here okay okay so you know that your item is going to be the maximum items you have uh, you know in this uh, particular uh, entire table is for the north where we have the one two three four and five right so either you can do one thing you can uh, you know count like this you can put this county and then the moment i selected the table you see that it shows in north because north is a range which you have which we have created if you remember in the beginning that is why you get to see here right or the other way is i think that uh you know if you don't want to use the function you can always give it a, a buffer for example right now they are five maybe you can write here six or maybe ten that that depends you know because then what will happen that the table expands then you will actually automatically those values will come in the drop down so right now what i'm doing is i'm only keeping it five okay and the width how many number of the columns well the column will always remain one yes either you select south or west or north or center or east every time you will require the only the one column okay that is what we want to do now if i press ctrl shift enter because this is the array function and if i just take you to the f9 you would see here the values are coming architecture museum and then 000 of course that would also be there because there's nothing actually after the you know architecture in the museum okay now this is the formula and we don't need we do not need this okay now we we are actually going to copy this function before i do that first of all let us quickly go ahead and check that if i change anything in the direction well that works well i think that works because the first number is coming as river so if i just select f9 it's going to show me as the river rafting and then 000 so it is working but how to give it a you know drop down shape so what you will do is uh, i just put the you know i'll just freeze this b13 and now i'm going to actually copy the formula now copy the formula and you go here and again you go to the data and the data validation and here you will create click on the list and here you're going to write equals to and control v okay 
paste this formula over here and then click OK. The moment you click OK, you see that because of the list, you have the drop down here. And this is looking very nice, pretty nice, guys, right? And now if you change anything, you don't see here zeros, right? They are the blanks. So it is perfect. If I select north, I have here all the items here. So look at this. This is really super cool, right? So what we did is we used actually this function. Okay. I hope now you understood actually why we first of all created the table like this so that in just one step we can create all the south, west, north, center and the east, you know, the name managers which you see here, right? Using the create uh, this create from selection and what we did is we simply use the offset function we said that from the b13 everything is going to be controlled so the function called the match is going to find out which column because row number will always remain you know one right because you want to capture the the first item and then uh, from the first item then whatever the height you will give that the number of rows will be right as simple as that Okay, so this is how you can create your offset uh, uh, dynamic drop downs using the offset as well. Next time, if 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 your interviewer is going to ask you how many ways you know with uh, how many ways you can create the dynamic drop downs, at least you can tell them that you can create the drop downs using the indirect and the offset function as well, right? So that's it for now, guys, and uh, we'll talk something more exciting in the coming videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.